as we continue to produce more and more oil out of West Texas, water management becomes more and more important. We talk to an expert on this episode of The Crude Truth. In 1901, at Spindletop Hill near Beaumont, the future of Texas changed dramatically as, like a fountain of fortune, thousands of barrels of oil burst from the earth towards the sky. Soon, Detroit would be cranking out Model Ts by the millions, and America was on the move, thanks to the black gold being produced in Texas. Now, more than a century later, the vehicles are different, but nothing else has truly changed. Sure, there may be many other alternative energy sources like wind and solar and electric. But let's be honest, America depends on oil and entrepreneurs, and if the USA is truly gonna be independent, it has to know the crude truth. This episode is brought to you by LFS Chemistry. We are committed to being good stewards of the environment. We are providing the tools so you can be too. NAEP Expo, where deals happen. Air Compressor Solutions. When everything is on the line, Air Compressor Solutions is the dependable choice to keep commercial business powered up. Sandstone Group. Exec Crew. Elevate your network, elevate your knowledge. Texas Star Alliance. Pecos Country Operating. Fueling our future. Well, hello, and as always, thank you very much for tuning in to another episode of The Crude Truth. Today, we're filming from our Dallas flagship studios here at the Real News Communications studio. So thank y'all all very much. Uh, and as always today, I've got my great co-host, Christy. How are you? I'm doing amazing today. How are you? I cannot complain. It's been a good day and it's actually sunshine after all the weather we've had lately. Beautiful. And uh, I tell you what, everything has been so busy and with oil numbers as high as they've been, you know, we're producing record amounts of oil that we never have. I can't even talk today. Holy cow. That's how excited I'm about <laughs> how much oil we produce. But also water is becoming a real big issue because we're having to put the water back in the ground. And the real question is, how are we doing that safe, safely? Have you heard about that at all? Um, not until this morning. So would you like to like elaborate on it a little bit with me? Yeah, I know uh, what's been really going on is, again, when we get done, you know, producing all, we got to put the water back in the ground. So we're basically trying to find it, like put it back where it's coming from. However, there's so many environmentalists out there saying that it's actually not that we're harming the earth and we're really not. So that's why I'm really excited to have on our guests today that we have. Uh, we have on today two great people that know West Texas like the back of their hands. Uh, we have on the chief operating officer of CIP, which is Chemical Injections Partners, Brad Savota. Brad, how are you? I'm doing great. Excited to be here. Oh, well, I'm very excited that you are here. And then also here for her third time is... Brianna Johnson, <laughs> Business Development Manager. Brianna, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, doing real well. And, you know, we were joking in the pre-meeting that you're actually right up there with J.P. Uh, Warren and Keith Stelter to be the Five Timers Club to be on the show. So, so do I have a trophy? Do you have it ready for me? Oh, uh, well, we got to get to the five, but there could be. That, that's what I'm excited. Whatever that happens, we're going to have to make that fun. She's really competitive, so. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have that ready for you next time. Yeah, we'll text you and ask you where it is. Yeah, I'll, really... yeah, I'll be like, hang hey, you know, where, where are the other two yeah. next to that? Hopefully, I'll, I'll be like just watching each other's episode. Okay, they're on number three or number four, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but thank you guys so much for coming in. And Chemical Injection Partners, Brad, has just been Literally, y'all have been kicking butt and taking names, as I like to say, um, on the produced water side. So y'all manage produced water and help clean it up. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, yeah, I think the produced water space, as you mentioned, um, it's vital to the industry, to the environment, right? There's just a stewardship of the land, but it's also the fastest growing segment within oil and gas. So when somebody drills, the operator drills for oil, there's... For every one barrel of oil that comes up, there's anywhere from three to 10 barrels of produced water. Yeah. So now what you mentioned is, what do you do with this water? How do you A, dispose it safely back into the ground and or coming up with recycle plans? How can we reuse this water for back into the production side of oil and gas, but then also bigger picture, you know, commercially? Is there a use out there once we clean it up for ag land, right? Commercial use. So. Um, I feel that this part of the industry is just scratching the surface onto where it can go. 
Well, I mean, and I'm glad you brought up the point that for what I think your numbers you just said were for every barrel of oil produced was three to five barrels of water. And that is true. Sometimes I do joke as an operator saying, we actually are a water producing company that just fits the oil on the side. You know, yeah, exactly. that's the extra benefit of, of basically bringing water out of the ground. Um, and then you, uh, along is also here, Brianna. Brianna, thank you again for coming on again. Again, we were joking for your third time. <laughs> for those out there that don't know you, you know, please introduce yourself. Um, I'm Brianna Johnson, and I am with currently CIP. Well, not currently. I'm never leaving. <laughs> <laughs> you can get rid of me. <laughs> um, with CIP, I have a background in business development and sales and found myself going into the water industry about three years ago. Um, and here I am. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, when we talk about how important the water is, and I like how you said that, hey, it's almost becoming more about water in West Texas than it is oil because we are producing so much. Uh, Brad, you know, if you don't mind, share some of your background because sure. congratulations, you've been highlighted in several different business magazines here lately, mm -hmm. not only because of what you've been able to do at CIP, but because of your background uh, that you are almost uh, somebody that can just go transform transformably from one industry to another just because of what you and your skills. Yeah, that's very kind of you. But um, my background is after graduation, I graduated from Colorado State University uh, in 2001, and I joined Heritage Conoco right before the Phillips merger. And so within the first six months, we all went into a global developmental program down in Houston where we did 12 months of almost every discipline within oil and gas. So from upstream, midstream, downstream. And then from there, A, you had to pass or you'd have a job. Yeah. And then once you passed, you could have been kicked out anywhere across the world. So I started my career in New York City on the wholesale uh, fuel supply uh, part of the industry. So I was with ConocoPhillips for about two years um, and then transitioned over to Hess Oil. Hess Oil is the yeah. big company out of uh, New York City. Um, I did home heating, commercial use, and then got onto the retail side with Hess. Uh, they owned a chain of networks from Miami all the way up to New Hampshire, uh, and then big on the fuel supply, obviously. Um, and so that background really got me back to really formulating and building high functioning teams. Um, and I did that and I was with Hess for probably six, seven years, and then transitioned to Racetrack Petroleum, which is an independent um, fuel supplier a convenience store chain out of Atlanta, Georgia, and went through multiple different roles and leadership uh, levels with them. And um, I tell you, each company was tremendous because I took it as a great learning opportunity, right? right. And they're, they're huge companies. And now I'm with an organization that is just beginning. And I think that was one of the, the, the positives coming over here was, uh, A, we have a tremendous uh, founder, Kyle Berry, that has a great reputation within the oil and gas, has been very successful. Um, and now he is onto his next venture, which is CIP. Um, and we actually uh, met through mutual friends and I was still with Racetrack. And uh, I say, like to say in life that timing is everything, right? And we started talking and there was an opportunity to come in and he said, hey, it's gonna be much less you know, complex and much less on the people side that you're used to, but I think we have something special brewing here. Right, we got a great model. We're in a great niche of the of the industry, and now let's have some fun. Let's really grow this the right way, build trem tremendous teams, and you know, there's a lot of things that we can do with produce water for operators helping them out. But then also, we talked about environmentally, making sure that we're in compliance with you know the Railroad Commission and regulatory compliance to uh, dispose or recycle this water the proper way. That's a lot. I like that. So how are you coaching um, this team to be effective now that you've transferred over here? Yeah, I love it. Um, I think the leadership just comes down to, you know, setting setting the tone, the culture within the uh, company itself. Um, and we do, you know, we talk about it all the time, but it starts with integrity. Uh, we got to have integrity. Our guys are field-based, right? We ask them to be professional, go out, do their job. Uh, no one's going to be watching them, micromanaging them. We have to have high character and high integrity. So that's number one. Uh, number two, it's all about team. And I don't care, you know, if it's Kyle Berry, our, our founder, myself, Brianna, um, you know, somebody that was hired last week, team before individual in anything we do. So we have that team camaraderie and then um, we have to have positive solution-minded um, or solution-minded 
uh, mindset. So we have to go out there. It's operations. It's oil field. There's things that are going to come up that are challenges each and every day. You might have a game plan at the beginning of the week, and by 10 a.m. on Monday, it's ruined, right? Yep. So how do you really embrace those obstacles and changes with a positive attitude and a solution mindset, right? And then after that, it's all about the job. Go out there and let's make sure we communicate best in class internally with each other, along with our operators, and then make sure that we deliver on what we say. Let's go out and provide great service, and that translates to great results. So I think with that, everybody understands our culture, and everybody has each other's back internally with the organization to really grow this thing. I think one of the biggest things I'm I'm stoked about, what I'm really happy about is with teams, it comes down to consistency. I've been with companies in the past where it's high turnover, right? Mm -hmm. Oil, gas, West Texas, same thing. Um, I came on actually two years ago today. I came on to CIP and it yeah, was, uh, it was, uh, <laughs> we, we did a lot of heavy lifting early on just to formulate the culture and the teams and, and get ready for our growth. But in the past 16 months, we have not had one individual leave CIP on their own. That's right. Voluntarily. That is right? amazing. Now we've had to make tough calls and we probably got rid of 10 to 12 people. But again, if they're not living up to those six things I mentioned, they don't have a seat with CIP. That's amazing. That says a lot about your leadership and the business for sure. And I will say, you know, I've worked for other service companies um, and I, I think that is huge. I mean, there's been other companies and it is always high turnover. Um, and I think that not not just because it's your anniversary, but he he really has put a structure in the company and it's the organization. And I feel like um, all of the employees, including myself, always feel very welcome to if we have an idea or I don't know, we see a problem. I feel like he's very open to letting us all sit down at a table and come up with a solution together. So I think that has been a driving force too. Being a female in this industry, what do you think some of the barriers are being a female leader? Um, I would say, how do I say this? Um, you know, I think I think that it's a challenge in itself working in oil and gas. Um, I think even though there are many females now in the industry, it's it's still a bit of a barrier you have to get past. Um, but I also feel like it motivates me even more. Um, and it's a very inspiring that there are very few females in the industry, I feel like. But the ones that are in the industry, um, you know, I've only been in it for a couple of years and seeing what they have done before me, it just motivates me to keep going. To set the bar up higher and higher yeah, for yeah. women that want to come into it. That's yeah. amazing. And I think every room needs a female to, you know. We just discussed this yesterday. Spice it up. <laughs> Not only that, women bring different, uh, you know, different views and everything when it comes to, uh, you know, a, a man's business or anything in any type Absolutely. of relationship. 100%. Women see things totally um, different. We have intuition then men don't understand, and it yeah. actually helps elevate the yeah. business. It really yeah. does. And we can really read people too. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> half a second. Yeah, I'm like I told you I was. Right. Yeah, exactly. I know. I always see that. <laughs> Really want the truth? Yeah, yeah. I'll tell me. Put my mind ring. <laughs> well, you know, as as we continue here with what y'all are building over there at CIP, for those out there that don't truly understand what the produced water is, what is what is it that you guys are looking for in a customer, and what are y'all doing to help out those customers in the, in the oil and gas industry? Sure, I'll, I'll leave with that. Yeah, you go. I'll I'll leave with this. Okay. Um, so, kind of the life cycle is obviously the operator on the production side, right? Drills the oil. Up comes uh, water with oil and a bunch of other, you know, things within the water, uh, you know, fluids, chemical, um, you know, minerals. So once the midstream water operators take custody from the operator, uh, we're hand in hand with them. So we make sure that from the batteries all the way to the SWD, which is the facilities where the, pro the water is processed, cleaned up, and then goes either downhole or back to the recycle side. Yeah. We're there with the whole life cycle of that that portion. So we are aligned with our operators and midstream uh, customers. We understand what their concerns are, their goals are, what their metrics are. And we like to think of ourselves as an extension to their team. So we're right there along with them. We have weekly meetings, uh, you know, multiple weekly meetings at times. But, uh, you know, we just want to be aligned. And I think it comes down to a lot of 
the issues or the companies or teams that are not as imp uh, impactful, it comes down to communication and alignment. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if it's internally with our team, we make sure that we're buttoned up, everybody's on the same page, and then we don't stop there. We got to make sure that we're aligned and on the same page with our customers. I feel like a lot of service companies with their customer, I mean, sometimes that customer doesn't even know what the service company is doing behind the scenes. Um, and just that sets us apart as well as we are just, it's almost like we're, I mean, we are on two different sides, but we're on the same team. Like he said, it's all very tangled up with each other in operations. And um, I've spoken to customers before and their issue with their service provider is, you know, I don't know what they're doing out in the field. I don't know what solutions they're using. And I don't know. There's obviously a reason why it's not working. But, you know, our customer comes to us and with the problem. And so everybody is just, you know, on the same drawing board, basically. So, well, you know, that. as we're talking about the service side of things, and right now, you know, we're producing more oil as, as we were talking about at the beginning that we ever have. You know, how funny is that during this administration? Where I'd say, producing the most of, you know, every month seems to be a new record of production. Uh, that doesn't mean that we're drilling new wells, but that just means that the old wells are producing, that you guys are doing y'all's part to keep those wells going. As a service company in the industry, are y'all seeing a pickup in y'all's work or are y'all seeing it kind of stagnate right now in West Texas? So I think it's it's a big pickup. Um, you know, I think within CIP and probably within the industry, like I said uh, at the beginning, it's the fastest growing segment within uh, oil and gas. So with that, you know, creates a lot of opportunities and a lot of business. Right. And, um, you know, also that with these opportunities right now for the business, you know, what are y'all doing to, um, you know, on the chemical side? Because like, you know, the moment you hear the word chemical, yeah. what are y'all doing yeah. you know, with all that? So it's great. I think that's what also separates, you know, CIP. So our, our founder, um, he had uh, several SWDs. And to Brianna's point, they would get a check or invoice at the end of the month and it was one price. They didn't know, you know, how much was chemical, how much was service. If it was service, what was the scope of work, what was done. And so it was just one, one, one invoice. Um, and what we're doing and trying to change the model is really being true consultants and a service provider. And we partner with these, you know, big global whole, uh, wholesale chemical companies. So we're not the ones going out to our customer and saying, hey, it's our chemical, right? It's our service and we're just going to pitch our chemical, right. right? And just say, no, we go out and since we are, you know, disconnected from our chemical and we're sourcing the best chemical, we're going to get the best price and the most effective chemical, right? And each, op each uh, customer is different, each well is different. So with that, we rely on data that we are forward thinking we analyze the data and it tells us what we need to do and how to treat that facility, that pipeline the right way with yeah. other different chemistries. Right. So it's not an all in one deal. And I think that's what really separates us is we don't have skin in the game with the chemical. We're gonna, our job is to find you, the the uh, the customer, the best chemical at the best price. And then we're gonna really excel on that partnership on the service side. I think it allows us to, I mean, it does allow us to fully focus on service. Um, I, I think that sometimes an issue in the chemical world is that service side is kind of not being paid attention to enough. And it almost leads at where the customer is having to hire somebody sometimes to manage your chemical program. You should have to hire a person internally to manage a chemical program that you're paying for externally. So yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, I had thought about that. Yeah, that, that would be like me hiring a maid to clean my house and then me still having to clean it. Yeah. What? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. <laughs> no, not at all. Brad, you know, you your knowledge and every and your background is so so extensive with what you've been doing. Um, you know, what other than the turnover, because you mentioned that, hey, the turnover is one thing that you've noticed mm -hmm. is a difference. What is another big difference? Or, or really, let me rephrase the question. What's another thing that you're bringing over from the big company mindset and the CIP to help streamline and keep this continue to be successful? Yeah, I think it um, starts with our team. We have an amazing team, but, you know, just like anything, they're field guys, they're in the field, um, and they're great at what they do. No, I don't think anybody is in, you know, fifth grade saying I want to work in the oil field, right, like for my career. And yet great people end up there, right? So I think 
my my goal, my mission is to make everybody understand that when they go out each and every day, that what they do matters, right? What they do, if it's our if our, our drivers delivering, you know, chemical to site, you know, if it's our techs going in and doing, you know, treatments on oil or tank audits, that matters. So I think always reminding them and installing that why behind their job and why it matters. So it creates that sense of pride uh, and fulfillment, right? So we have weekly calls, we have town hall meetings, and it's about them. It's, you know, hey, tell me what's going on. What obstacles do you have? Let's talk through them. Let's resolve them, right? And I think what I've heard with some other service providers and, and companies out there, it's, you know, they pick up the phone, they hire somebody, throw them out there and do the job, right? And I think we really create that structure and identity of who our team is and what they need to do. Well, and I think that, I mean, not only I will say the people that we have at CIP, the account managers, the field techs, I mean, they are all, they genuinely care about their job and they are all very passionate about it and they they want to excel and they want to do the best they can. Um, and I think the fact that CIP um, brings us all in quarterly for town hall meetings and, you know, communication is open, I feel like it drives, it drives their motivation to want to excel as well. Um, because everybody is just on the same team. So, and then, you know, when you talk about your town halls, and again, I know y'all are doing it as a group, mm -hmm. but what are y'all doing on the public side to let them know, hey, you know, we're not, you know, what are y'all doing on that side to help people out, let them uh, have more knowledge about y'all's part of the industry? Well, we're doing it today. Yeah. So that, that's one thing. <laughs> but uh, I think, um, you know, Brianna really holds that up with, with her BD job and, you know, attending conferences and not only, you know, getting our name out there, but learning, right? We want to sit at these conferences and we want key takeaways that we can go at back and apply internally with CIP and then have those knowledge shares at those conferences. You know, here, this is what CIP is doing. Here's some of our best practices. Um, yes, it's very competitive out there, but the overall goal is, you know, how do we safely and most efficiently, you know, manage the produced water? And I think that's the overall goal. And, you know, I think just through, you know, many conferences that we attend and mm -hmm. learn from and share, I think is a great way. Yeah. Brianna, I have a question in regards to women that want to get into this industry. Like you said, that you know more are coming. What yeah. could what could you um, tell them to encourage? Obviously, to move forward. It is a man's you know world in a sense. Yeah. that women are coming into it. Any advice or anything? I would say. So I will say when I first started, I was so intimidated and so scared. My first conference I went to, I don't think I left the back of the room during the panel discussions because I just felt like I really you know I. Oil and gas is complicated. There's so many moving parts. And I feel like I was, I didn't know really what was going on. And I think it's just one of those careers. If you get a position within anywhere in oil and gas, just be, just be honest. Tell people, ask people questions. Tell people you don't know what's going on. I feel like people appreciate the transparency um, and that's the best way you're going to learn. And also we've all been there. Like, just go in there and just, you'll figure it out. So, so then you feel going to the conferences has definitely helped you with knowledge. Yeah. Isn't it? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I mean, half the time, some, well, probably more than half the time, I'm like, what are you talking about? But, you know, I will ask I don't later. feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, are they speaking English? <laughs> okay. <laughs> good. That's about? good to know. Yeah. But, um, no, I definitely, I, I mean, I just think just like anything else, just being honest and asking questions and just trying to soak it all in. And I definitely, when I first started, I YouTubed like what is oil and gas from like the beginning. And I have a little notebook, basically oil and gas for dummies. So and yeah, people I ask, reference that sometimes. People ask me, you're on oil and gas. I'm like, all I know is I pump my car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all I know. That's all I know. Yeah, I need to go. That's good. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's about the end, the end of the, the chain right there from yeah, you guys. Exactly. But, but I will, I'll, I'll give uh, Brie tremendous credit. Um, she came in, you know, November last year, December, yeah, roughly. And, uh, you know, talking about being a woman and female into the industry. And, you know, we have, we have three females on our team, right? We have 32 members total, but she did a tremendous job of coming in. And the first week we had this amazing project with one of our midstream customers. And it was long days, long hours. And she just said, let me get a pink uh, hard hat on and where do you need me? And it was awesome. She was, I mean, working 8 a.m. to 10 p.m., walking up catwalks, yeah. checking tanks, doing treatments. Like, yeah. 
And you talk about immediately earning the respect of the team. Wow. There you go. That's was, amazing. Yeah, it, it was fun. It, I definitely not something I would want to do you know, <laughs> as a career, but uh, <laughs> but learn. I was like, man, I'm going to be really skinny if I keep doing it. <laughs> there you go. Positive outlook on it. <laughs> Won't have all my nails, but I'll be skinny. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> No, well, you guys have just been doing so much in West Texas, and you know, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I, it's just too too much fun that that you guys are having out there, and I think that's awesome. Yes, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that, Brad. Um, kind of bringing it back to the environmental side, you know. Again, we were kind of joking during the beginning, right before we started, yeah. that West Texas, some call it like it's part of the Swiss cheese underneath. Sure. There's so much, you know, and they're blaming the oil and gas industry. And especially, again, for the water, what are you guys doing for that water that y'all are putting back in the ground? Just, again, yeah. you know, trying to bring people aware. What yeah. what happens? Yeah, 100%. Um, and you, like you said, there's so much. There's lithium, there's copper, there's a bunch of mining there. So I honestly think the Texas Railroad Commission does a tremendous job of regulations. I yes. think if you look at the industries I've been in the past and kind of the regulatory compliance that had to be issued, um, you know, I'm very impressed with the nature that the state of Texas and the Railroad Commission takes for oversight of doing the right thing and the regulations within our industry. So I'll first say that, but then it comes to, on to us. So we're highly knowledge, knowledgeable about the regulatory compliance and working with our operators on what is needed from the regulatory standpoint to keep you know their operations up and running um, and then making sure that you know while, while we are treating this water, we're treating it to easily flow through the pipelines and then through the system and downhole safely and then more efficiently, like I said. Um, and that's where our chemical solutions come through right. based off the data that we're seeing, but we can tailor that. So we will strip out, you know, a lot of the iron or H2S, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then ATP bacteria that if it was not treated properly, that's running downhole and creating, you know, more pressure issues downhole. So we understand, you know, how to decrease pressure pressure numbers and then increase injectivity the right way and the safe way so we are always compliant with the railroad commission standards and again you know the railroad commission has i agree has done a great job um uh, they're uh, for as an operator they're my best friend and they're my worst <laughs> at the yep. same time yeah you know because we have to follow all these rules and then not only that just like y'all are responsible as an operator we're responsible for that and then we got to make sure that Y'all are doing the right things right. In, in, in those reports that y'all provide. Right. Y'all provide them to the people, then uh, the commission, and then we have to provide it to Sure. It just because there's so much checks and balances that are in place. And that with West Texas alone, you know, I do like to say that a long time ago in the oil and gas industry, West Texas, unfortunately, was a wild, wild west, literally. And now we're coming back. And you said it earlier, being great stewards of this land. It's like, you know, I haven't met one oil and gas individual that – is somebody that goes, oh, I hate the land. You know, mm -hmm. most of us are conservationists, you know, yeah. love to hunt, love to plant trees at the same time. Uh, and so we do care about Mother Earth. And so that's something I do want to say that I did like you saying that at the beginning. It's like, hey, try to be good stewards of what we're doing. Correct. Correct. Very important. Very. Very important. Um, you know, as we're wrapping up in, in the time today, uh, Brad, I want, where can people find you guys and reach out to you? Sure. Um, so I think when you post this, I'll have all my contact information up there, but I mean, we're chemical injection partners are based out of Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, and then we have offices in West Texas. We have an office in Midland. We have an office in Pecos. And then down in the Eagle Fur, we do business down there as well. And we have an office there. And we're looking to expand up into uh, New Mexico, probably the Carlsbad area here shortly. Carlsbad is getting, it, it's picking up out it is. there. It's it real is. interesting, especially with the way the dynamics are in New, New Mexico sure. right now. I exactly. see it picking up. It just shows how important the oil and gas is to the economy of any state. Any state. For sure. Correct. Yeah. And Bree, what about you? How can people get a hold of you just in case? Um, well, I'm on LinkedIn all the time. I live on there. Um, and then I'll also add my contact information as well. So I, yeah. <laughs> Chrissy. What? This was a great episode. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It was absolutely yeah, fabulous. Yeah, so. I learned a lot, so that's good. <laughs> good. That's great. Well, we Brad, appreciate it. Yes, and I cannot thank you guys enough for coming out to Dallas to the flagship yeah. studios today. It's beautiful. Oh, thank you. It's and uh, you know, you guys, what y'all are doing again? Like I said at the beginning, y'all are setting this. Y'all are setting the standard. Y'all are setting the tone, and y'all are just leading by example with everything y'all are doing over there at Chemical Injection. 
So thank you all very much. And again, to all our listeners out there, please be sure to connect with them. And we'll see you all again on another episode of The Crude Truth. Again, The Crude Truth would like to thank today's sponsors. LFS Chemistry, NAPE Expo, Air Compressor Solutions, Sandstone Group, Exec Crew, Texas Star Alliance, Pecos Country Operating, and Real News Communication Network. The easiest way to start your own podcast and TV show? Real News Communications Network. Stand out from your competition. Produce streams of high-quality social media content. Become a thought leader in your industry. With RNCN, you get to be the host. We handle everything else. Tour one of our three locations in Dallas, Fort Worth, and the Colony. Call 972-402-6333 or visit launchashow.com to find out more.